Hey guys, Drifter here. In my never-ending quest for more content, I've decided to take all of my TikTok content and all of my Twitter content and smoosh it together into one semi-cohesive YouTube video. This is a complete dry run for me. It's essentially experimental YouTube comment. So I'm looking for feedback from all of you about everything you like, don't like, and want to see more of. Of note, I'm gonna be reviewing about eight to 10 different unusual food items and then a product sponsor in the middle. And these are short form videos, two to three minutes each, so it's gonna kind of reset every now and then, but in the future, I'm gonna edit them a little differently so it flows like a normal YouTube video. And without any further ado, let's jump right in. We've reviewed a lot of muffins here on this channel, almost all of which are from Central Market because they go really hard. But today, I wanted to show off my absolute favorite. This is the Cranberry Blueberry Muffin. And I gotta tell you, they do not skimp on the cranberries or blueberries. Just look at this glorious little guy. The thing that I love most about these muffins is that they don't cheat you. Like sometimes some stores, they put all the blueberries on top and that's all you get. But check this out. We're gonna cut this guy right down the middle. I'm trying to do it as nice and as beautiful as possible for the camera here. And let's see how many blueberries and cranberries are in the middle of my muffin. I can't even see it. I just hope that it's as glorious as all the others have been. I mean, I feel like I'm really more eating uh, like cranberries with bread instead of muffin with cranberries. I mean, given footage like that, do we really even need to do a taste test? No, we don't, but I really want to do one. Oh my God, exactly what I wanted. Blueberry sweet, cranberries tart, almost all sugar. It's fruit, fruity. Sorry, everybody's laughing at me. I'm talking with my mouth open. I just like it so much. And of course, pairs perfectly with milk. Mm. This is a solid 10 out of 10 product for me. It's 105 degrees in Texas today, and we decided to cool off by going to Cold Stone Creamery, who just so happens to have an entire Nintendo line of ice cream Mario ice cream, Kirby ice cream, and of course, Animal Crossing ice cream. So let's go try them out. Right, so a million degrees, a little bit on the melty side. How does it taste? Mm. Is it good? Mm, it's like strawberry on strawberry with marshmallow. Mm. Mm, very good. Well, I wasn't kidding about the 105 degrees. Unfortunately, it's already started to melt out here. But time for the important part, the taste test. Mm. Yep. This is cake batter ice cream, yellow cake, sprinkles, and some marshmallows. It's basically like a birthday cake ice cream, but a little bit more colorful, a little bit more Mario themed. And I like it. I'd give it a solid seven out of 10. Today we're going to be doing a taste test of carrot cake Oreos. We picked these up at Big Lots where they have a lot of alternative Oreos going on. And this looked by far the weirdest to me. Mocha Oreos, chocolate Oreos, red velvet Oreos, you know, vanilla ones we're familiar with, but carrot cake? Like carrot cake flavor? Okay, sure, let's just dive right in. Wah, wah, wah. Whoa, they look just like the vanilla Oreos. If you handed me one of these, I would say they're a vanilla Oreo, but I do gotta say- They're darker. Yeah, they're a little darker. They look a little bit like, more like wheaty. So right off the rip, when I take them out of the box, they smell very sweet. They smell very much so like a carrot cake. And when you open them up, you can definitely see the cream cheesy center of the carrot cake. So I'm expecting the cookie to be the carrot 
and this to be the cream cheese. So let's go ahead and take a big old bite. Hmm. Okay, this surprises me. I can really taste the carrot cake in there. If you like carrot cake flavor, there's a lot of carrot cake flavor in the wafer. And the cream cheese is very nice too. So far, this is very pleasant, but no test is complete without Oreos and milk. All right, milky Oreo test. Okay. It's even better. You have to get the, the wafer is pretty soggy, but when you do, they have actually have a cake-like texture to them. My brain thinks I'm eating a pretty moist cake right now. So I gotta hand it to Oreo. They said that this was a carrot cake Oreo and it 100% tastes like a carrot cake and it's pretty good and I'm impressed. So I'm gonna give this about, I'm gonna give this a nine out of 10. Today we're going to be reviewing the Blue Ice Pop Mic, which as you can see from the packaging is for Astro A40 TR headsets. And I think this is a really cool product because as you know, Logitech acquired Blue and Astro and a variety of companies and now they're making them all play nice together. But let's see if I can unbox this in good form for the camera. Wah, 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 wah. It's upside down. <laughs> okay, so I can't see it as well as you can. We're gonna pull it out and it looks very, very small, which I expected, it is just a microphone. I'm gonna see if I can get this guy out easily and I can. So let's demonstrate. Here's some A40s. These are, I think, Gen 1 of the color waves, the most neon of pink that you can get. And all A40 headsets, sometimes they're covered up by the little uh, ear tags, but they have a microphone plug in the side. And this is the standard Astro microphone. So this comes default with all the headsets and unfortunately is one of the weakest parts of the product. The microphone here is very, very simple and it's also kind of compressed because this is designed for tournament use. So the standard microphone is like when you're having a tournament and you're screaming at people and there's eight other people on the other side of you screaming and it's designed to communicate understandable audio in those environments, which isn't the same as say a commentary or something really nice like a condenser mic. So while the default mic will work really well for a tournament, it probably won't get you the audio quality you want for say live streaming or commentary or any kind of audio recording. So what Blue worked very, very hard to do is to make the highest quality, smallest mic possible to get something kind of like a Blue Snowball or a Blue Yeti, but in tiny form that just plugs right in. Bump it a bum. I'm gonna pick this guy up. So now the headsets look a little different, but the quality of your microphone went from tournament ready to probably podcast ready. And I wanted to give this guy a little test. So for this test, I've got my wife's laptop and Audacity, and we're gonna do a little recording session on the Blue Ice Pop mic itself. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog and the rain in Spain stays mainly on the plains. This is how your voice would sound in the middle of a stream, commentary, or anything if you were using the Blue Ice Pop mic. And I would like to make a note before I play this back and listen to how it sounds. I'm sitting in a very echoey room with no padding whatsoever. In the studio, it'd probably be even better. The rain in Spain stays mainly on the plains. This is how your voice would sound in the middle of a stream, commentary, or anything if you were using the Blue Ice Pop mic. And I would like to make a note before I play this back and listen to how it sounds. I'm sitting in a very echoey room with no padding whatsoever. In the studio, it'd probably be even better. So that is my little mini unboxing and review of the Blue Ice Pop mic. It is an extremely cost effective way to increase the quality of your audio outputs if you're doing commentary. I do believe that the Blue microphones, the Spark, the Yeti, Snowball is actually pretty comparable to this, but a lot of their higher end products might do a slightly better job. But if you want best audio quality, bang for your buck, simplest to use to install instant upgrade, it's kind of hard to beat the Ice Pop mic. Now they do sponsor me, that's an important legal disclosure, and there's a 5% off link down there in the description of this tweet somewhere. So if you wanna check this product out, if you think it would be useful for you, you can just click and buy. And I almost forgot if you're traveling, if you're doing commentary on the road at like conventions when those used to be a thing, or you just need a good quality mic for your business meetings, these, this guy's fantastic.
Today we're doing a taste test of a product that seems like it would be hard to hate. It's called Ultimate Chocolate Oreo. If you take a closer look at the package, you'll see that there are three different kinds of flavored cream chocolate. We have dark chocolate, milk chocolate, and what I believe to be German chocolate, and a lot of interest from somebody who should not eat chocolate. Get out of here. This could be great, it could be delicious, or it could be a chocolate overload nightmare. There is a limit on chocolate. You put too many different kinds of chocolate together, they don't always get along. So without any further ado, let's dive right in. Bum, 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 bum. Wow, that is kind of heavy, actually. Whoa, look at all these glorious chocolate Oreos. Right off the rip, I noticed that these are very, very thick cookies. There's a lot of cream in here. You can see the additional layers. The downside is though, that it seems like they were all squeezed out of different machines. So uh, it's very easy to crumble them. Taking off the top, we can definitely see the additional layers. I'm gonna see if I can like scrape some, just like, like a barbarian here. Yep, so they're definitely not quite as distinct as what you would see on the package, but they are there and they are intact. Actually smells very similar to a regular Oreo. I don't really smell much of the additional chocolate, so let's just take a big bite. Hmm. It doesn't taste bad. It's kind of good. It's just a very chocolatey Oreo but you can't taste the distinct layers and flavors of chocolate. This really isn't any different than an Oreo that just has regular chocolate cream in there. But I mean, these are Oreos. And what are Oreos without milk? So I feel like we should dip this in the milk, get it a little bit soaky, toasty, amazing. Oh God, it almost exploded. Okay, see, that's a problem. I'm gonna pull it out now and we're gonna take a bite. It's still kind of the same. And chocolate cream is so thick, it actually doesn't soak up very much milk. I'm a little underwhelmed with these. I'm gonna give them like five out of 10. They're average, you know, they're very generic. It's another hot day in Texas and my wife and I went to get some boba tea, but right next to our favorite boba store, we noticed Churn X Bake, Artisan Creamery. I love ice cream, she loves ice cream. It's brand new, so we had to try it. And when we got here, we found out it's special Vietnamese ice cream. I don't know what that is, but it's gonna be fun. And what flavor did you get? I got almond lychee sorbet. And how does it taste? Like lychee, <laughs> actually. I don't really taste much of the almond, but it's really good. Oh. So what I got is ube coconut. Ube is the same as taro. It's kind of a sweet root. It's got this purplish color. And of course, some toasted coconut. and it's glorious, so good. This is a flavor that should be at Cold Stone, I swear. That's all for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I could probably make this kind of content once every week or two if you wanted to see more of it. So if you do, please let me know. And if you want to see some of this perhaps early, perhaps out of order, perhaps independently of a longer video, you can go check out the Twitter link down there below in the description or check out Astro Gaming because I'm going to be posting a lot of their stuff very soon on Twitter. Oh, wait, almost forgot. Drifter out.